This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 from the downtown studios of Think Tech Hawaii in the Pioneer Plaza. We are a show that focuses on success stories in Hawaii. We have all heard the challenges. We've heard that there is a, an environment here in Hawaii that may not be all that business friendly, but there are success stories. There are companies and individuals that have figured out how to make it work, and they come on the show and share their secrets with us. We also have on occasion people to come on and talk about their organizations that help support businesses or get people prepared to engage in business. And today we have Shane Greenland, who is the principal of the Academy of Business out in Campbell High School. And he's here today to talk a little bit about that academy and there's been a lot of changes out there that I'm not familiar with that he's gonna educate me and hopefully you on. Shane, welcome to the show. Thank you, Rich, thanks for having me. Now, you're, um, you've been in Hawaii for a while? or uh, I've been here about 10 years now. 10 years, and what brought you to Hawaii? Uh, my, my wife is from here, so we were originally teaching, and I was teaching and coaching in Las Vegas, um, basically living the dream in the, you know, the Ninth Island, but um, she wanted to come back, be closer to home, so we decided to move back here, applied for some jobs, first teaching job was at McKinley High School, okay. so I, I spent some years at McKinley, um, got tutored by a, a great man there, Mr. Neil Takamori, uh, athletic-wise, education-wise, got to learn what the island is about and, and, and see the change. We'd always come over on vacations and look at things, but uh, living here, after uh, I was at McKinley, I went to Pearl City for a year, and then I've now been at Campbell High School as an administrator for the, the last four years. Now, for those that don't exactly know where Campbell High School is, where is it located? We're in e Eva Beach, um, out near Kapolei, right next to the, the second city, or what now is becoming the, the, you know, the major city. But yeah, Eva Beach, you know, 96706, our, our kids take pride in it. Our, our uh, alumni and, and everybody that lives out there, they, they love the community. I live in the community and it, it's really a truly a great place to well, be. Well, it has been and I think continues to be one of the fastest growing areas in the state. I, mean, yep. I, I just was reading that uh, the sales uh, for homes were up like 16% recently. R very much so. There, there's so much growth that Campbell is actually the, the largest high school on the island. Actually in Hawaii, we have 3,200 students. We're continu you know, it's continuing uh, getting larger. The Hoapili project that's going up the road, you know, is going to bring in another 15,000 homes. So wow. the the area is bursting at the seams out there. So you got room for expansion? We we just actually got approved um, last legislative session. We're going to be building a uh, 39 million dollar building. It's going to be 27 classrooms, three stories, wow. and it's going to open the 2019-2020 school year. But the day it opens, we're already going to be at capacity based on projection enrollment. So we also have 44 portables on our campus. So we're, we're, we're finding every area of land we can put classrooms and, and we're putting them in. You know, it gives me a little bit of a flashback because I had lived in Vegas for a little bit myself. And at one point during the heyday, they were building one school a month. That's it's very big. I think it was the, the fifth largest school district in the nation and it was growing so fast. And it, until the, the boom hit like 2008, you know, and then, you know, home prices went down, but it, it was skyrocketing it was, for a while. It was, and, and it sounds like you've got a similar type of, uh, you know, environment out there where the kids are just coming in, you can't build the school fast enough to accommodate them all. But you've got an interesting concept out there that I'm really fascinated with. Um, it's a, an academy type model that you're using for the entire school. Yeah, so a, a lot of people may have heard, you know, like Waipahu, they get a lot of press with what they're doing and, and their principal, Keith Hayashi, he's, he's done a great job with it. And Campbell is now, we had started a few years ago with some basic academies, but now we've gone wall to wall with academies. So all of our ninth grade structure is one academy. It's called the Freshman, Freshman Success Academy. So all ninth graders transition into it. They talk about careers, try to get a focus more on what they think they want to do long term so that we can better focus on it in grades 10 through 12. And then in that 10th through 12th grade model, we now break it up into other academies where they'll have a what used to be our vice principals, we're now called principals over the academy. We've broken it up into to five different academies with so many different pathways. So just in mine alone, we have business, agricultural sciences, and then we have our international baccalaureate program that goes into mine too. So we, we have a wide range 
other academies. We have um, digital creative media. We have mm. culinary. We have you know, all the public human services, the nursing. We're going to look at EMT service providers. We, we really try to work with what is the going trends and the going needs on the island and how do we best prepare our students to be able to go in and take jobs with that. So we work a lot like with Peter Quigley at UH Manoa trying to look at the different business sectors and then based on the student's interest how do we organize and formulate our academies and then teach to those specific things so that kids are interested in what they're doing. Our building construction automotive program, you know, our STEAM Academy, engineers, technology, everything is getting so much bigger based on, on, on what the needs of the kids are and what those interests are, but what can we get them a career in? We just don't want to find jobs. We want to develop people that can get careers. Well, you know, that's very exciting, and I definitely want to hear more about that, but, you know, I want to loop back for just a second. This seems to be a very big, a uh, lot of moving parts. How did you end up, I mean, did you set out in life to do this, or, or how did you end up in your career doing something this large and complex? I, I've just always loved working with kids. I mean, when, when I originally got into education, I actually just wanted to coach. I didn't want to teach, but they basically told me, well, you need to teach so that you can coach. So <laughs> I, I got into it, you know, and I, I just really loved working with kids. I loved, you know, trying to go out and get them jobs or even create things to get them jobs. And then even in the classroom, you know, I, I started teaching PE, health, weight training, driver's ed. It just, you, you get to talk to kids and you, you really get to build relationships and connections. And all kids, all kids want to be successful. They all want help, but all kids have a story. And it just, it just really started driving me on really what my passion was and what I wanted to do. Because I've always thought, well, oh, I need to get out of education if I really want to go make money. And then as you start talking to other business people and, and, and you have different mentors, and it's, it's not always about making more money, but it's being happy in what you do and enjoying it and love what you do. And I, I, I loved working with kids. I loved teaching. I loved you know, being in the classroom. And it just it kind of just moved me forward. And then I had a, an administrator one time say, hey, wh why don't you think about getting into administration? And I'm like, mm. oh, I, I got had enough headaches already. But once you get into it and you see the impact that you can have and the people that you meet, and, and what you can do when you work well as a team with other administrators, man, you, you can really make a huge impact. And I, I just really love working with people. I love working with adults. I'm, I'm so low keyed, but I, I love to get out. I don't, I don't accept no for an answer. I'll go out and find ways to get it. If we need money, I'm gonna find money. If I need you know, resources, I'm gonna go find them. But it, you, you can't stop when it's, when it's for kids. I mean, how do you not try and get them to pursue and have the passion and the drive to go be successful? Well, it sounds like you set a pretty good example for the kids to follow. I try to. I've just I'll always learned, hey, be the first one to work, be the last one, you know, to leave, make sure everything's fine. I have teachers that'll call me on the weekends or on holidays, hey, can I get in and work? H how do you tell them no? When, when people want to go above and beyond what they're doing, don't set limitations. You find reasons to do it. And, and they understand when I say no. You know, I can't do it. It's usually if I'm spending time with my family. But other than that, but you find ways to make things happen, and, and, and the kids love it, and you know you get the respect for the teachers and different groups, but it's, it, it's the passion, it's the drive. I mean, if you love what you're doing, it, it's not a job. So if there was somebody that was going into, you know, I guess attending college now, wanting to be a teacher, and they're, they're listening to what you're doing right now, what advice would you give them? How could they take their career and get whatever credentials, teaching credentials or, or licenses that they need, and end up being this holistic type of coach or mentor for these these kids in school, uh, doing what you're doing. I, you know, I, I think you just got to find your niche, get into the classroom, and 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 talk to kids. You know, find find out what's important to them. Take that vested time and that interest, and then find out what you truly love. I mean, te teach the subjects that you're passionate about, and. Even if you're not, I mean, you know, educate yourself. Come across that you know you really care and you want to make a difference. And and before you know it, that these kids they they feel like your kids, you know, and you really care about them. You're you're finding ways to, to get them a snack when they need a snack, or you know, put shoes on them. But it, it, it's a great profession, you know. And everybody always talks about, you know, teachers don't make enough. Which I mean, yeah, you know, you always wish you know you can make more money. You wish you could do things, but. You know, when you look at the scope of it, I mean, t teachers have such care and such passion and that they spend money out of their own pockets, 
but at the same time, they get so much reward. When you mm -hmm. see a kid graduate and you see them go on and then they go do things and they're successful and then they come back and as you know, they want to tell you, hey, Mr. Mr. or hey, Miss, you know, you know, I did this or I got this, I finally graduated. I mean, th there's always that tie, you know, and that's w one of the biggest things, that even the bigger tie in Hawaii is just everybody, the first question you hear from everybody when you get here is, hey, what school you grad from, yep. you know? So I mean, yep, yep, it, yep. It, c high school is a very commonality you know, common spoke with everything. It ties communities together, and kids and everybody here they they really take pride in that, and, and it, it's really actually something that's enjoyable. So, we want our kids to feel like they they have that that homegrown aspect and that feeling from what we do at Campbell. But whatever profession you go into, but especially teaching, and you, you can just really make a huge difference and an impact on a kid's life. You don't realize the mentor or you know the role model that you are until you feel like they're getting affected. Well, and it's something that you experience every day. I every, mean, every, every day. day that you're either in the school or in the classroom, I mean, you've got that opportunity to meet and, and greet and, and motivate kids uh, in their daily lives. Yeah, especially when you like live right in the community, when you go to the grocery store, I mean, it's yeah. like, hey, Mr. Green, then I can talk to you for one minute. But you, you, you just have ties, you're not gonna break those. And you know, and there, there's gonna be days when, when people are maybe upset with you, and there's gonna be days when they just truly love you, but that, that's just part of the job. But, I mean, it, it is, it's just it, an everyday grind, and you know, n nobody goes into the profession thinking, you know, I don't like kids. I mean, they really wanna, you know, make a difference. It's, it's giving them the tools and resources to really do what they wanna do and strive for success. That's gotta be a big part of what you do is, is you know, I mean, you've got a bunch of teachers working for you as well, or with you, and. Uh, you've got to make sure that they've got the tools and the resources to be able to do what they want to do or should be doing with the kids. Yeah, and, and, and that's one of the main reasons why I'm here. It, we're, we're always looking for partners, always looking for resources, always trying to find money. I mean, it's not, you know, you don't ever want to have the haves and have nots, but how do you really get and how do you provide what you think is best for kids so that you can set them up for success, how you can tie the community in and bring them back and, and, and have, you know, special gatherings and, and rituals and traditions because it's really the memories that kids you know kids make while they're in high school that they really go member forever but the greatest impact that you can have is going to be so detrimental in, in the, the focus and the, the way they're going to be because they all, we want them all to be great moms and dads one day you know aunties uncles brothers sisters but right now when they're in high school we want them to be the best son or daughter they can be how do we teach them those you know the, the ethics and the values that they respect rapport how do you be that best person? And we, we really want that to come across, but we, we do that as a you know holistic school model because we want our teachers to model that as well. Well, you know, and that's good in a holistic way for the home environment and in the school environment, but the businesses also need that too. And so having uh, you know some uh, appreciation for coming to work on time, being doing your best, being properly dressed, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, so some of that uh, lessons that they learn carry over into their careers later. Yeah, and, and, that, and that's one of our big focuses that we're gonna concentrate on Campbell right now is is really working with our business partners and, and find out those soft skills, what those kids need, and you know, being able to be a critical thinker, and you know, and how do you make a person feel like a million dollars, those social skills that they can, they can just, it just becomes reactionary. I mean, we, we want them to make people feel so good. How do you get things in on time, be on time, you know? And, not the no call, no shows, you know, or, oh, I don't want to do this, or, I mean, just really putting forth that best effort till you get the best product, and then we want those kids so that they can go out and compete with jobs and be able to get everything that they can get and, and go out and find the career and have the passion to become what they want. But, yeah, our, our, the soft skills and, and really working on what's going to set you apart from everybody else is going to be a, a real big focus of what we're going to do in our academies. Well, we're gonna have to take a short break here. Uh, and what, what I'd like to be able to do when we come back from the break is to dive into a little bit of the details of the academy itself and, and what those different academies are. And of course, I would like to focus on the business part of it and uh, get a feel for what the classes are like, what the structure is like, and how it all kind of flows. So we'll, we'll get into that in the second half. Okay, sounds great. All right. Uh, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're here today with Shane Greenland. We're talking about Campbell High School and the Business Academy that they have out there as well as some other academies. Uh, we're going to take a, a short 60 second break and we'll be right back. Hey, aloha. Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation, 
we have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii. Uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stanley Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. Planning all week for the day of the big game. Watching at home just doesn't feel the same. What on the list is who's gonna drive? It's nice to know you're gonna get home alive. Plan for fun and responsibility. Choose a DD. Captain of our team. It's the DD. For every game day, assign a designated driver. Aloha, and welcome back to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. I'm here today with Shane. We're talking about Campbell High School over in the Eva Beach area, Kapolei area. Uh, actually, I learned that it is the largest high school in Hawaii right now. Uh, Shane, you've got an academy. Actually, I, I, from what I understand, there may be several different academies out there. Um, you're in charge of some of them, or, or at least the business one that I'm primarily interested in. Uh, can you um, share with us a little bit on how that's set up and how that works? And so our, our business academy, the, the way we're structuring it this year is um, we, we offer some basic classes. So we have like our business core, which is like introduction to business. We also have like accounting, finance, marketing, and then the economics part of it. But some of the things that we're looking at trying to do with, within our business department is actually bring other small businesses on campus. So we're trying to open up maybe some kiosks um, we thought about maybe trying to partner with like a Starbucks. Could we open up a, a mini little coffee stand and see if kids wanted to buy coffees? But we want to generate businesses that are going to be organized and run by students. Because mm -hmm. we want students to kind of have to go through the structure of building business plan, develop model, you know, look at things, go out, try, see if it does it work. What doesn't work, okay, how do you come back? How do you refine it, make changes? Uh, we've been trying to work with maybe Adidas and opening up an apparel store on our on our wow. campus, you know, being able to partner with somebody big but have have an identity, you know, with you know Campbell names, but it's with Adidas and and get it within the community. That there's such a great need with you know the the, the marketing and and the branding of your campus that we figured why not make that a business model at our school mm -hmm. and how do you best promote Campbell High School because. You know, of course, in our minds, we think Campbell High School, the, you know, the best high school in the state. So how do we best get that message out there? How do we make our campus look and have that college feel? And, and our students, they, they've come up, we, you know, we've done like surveys and stuff, and it's how do we come up with branding? How do we change that message in the marketing? But also, how do you change the feel of what perception of, hmm. you know, Campbell and Eva Beach is? So our, our kids really want to tackle a lot of those things. You know, <clears throat> we've talked about partnering up and maybe bringing a bank <clears throat> in, the, in on the campus. Some of the other high schools on the island have brought the banking in, looking at things. How do we best support that? Is, is that you know something that would be great for our campus? I know they had it at one time before, and one of the problems was it was only for deposit only. People couldn't get their money out, and it's like, Oh, wait, I, wait a minute! That's that's the perfect model for I, a bank. You know? For a bank, that, but you know everybody wants their money. So I, I mean, when we was talking to one of our banking partners, he's like, "Well, why don't you just put an ATM on a high school campus? You know, if we could bring in a portable ATM and put it where you could lock them up, people could get their money. You have special events; mm -hmm. people don't have to leave. And uh, you know, the light bulb goes on. It's like, wow, why never we think about that before? I mean, that that's a great idea because that would help us even like when we do registration or parents come, it's like, mm -hmm. you don't have to run nowhere. You can hurry and go get cash and pay. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it was just a win-win well, model. Lunch money. L L lunch anything. money, I mean, no matter what a kid needed, they all, they would always have access mm -hmm. to it. Parents have access. So we're really looking at you know how we can really change a lot of the things we did, but make it more real life. You know, even like within our, like our nursing academy, they're, they're gonna build a, like a hospital, mini hospital rooms with a couple beds that so mm -hmm. they can go in and train. Um, our, our auto department, we've had a business partner that wants to come in and, and do a, a diesel mechanic, you know, shops. I mean, all within all of these, it still functions around that business model and business structure. So our kids are actually gonna be intertwined and in trying to get into like the project-based learning of it. How do we intertwine and, and work with people outside of our academy, create that business model 
other students from other academies are focused in, in their pathway, but our, our business students are still focused on the model in which they want to run you know, our campus. We have an agricultural science that does a lot with the, the horticulture and vegetables. Alan Wong comes in, gets lettuce from Campbell High School, um, puts it on his menu, it says Campbell High School. We've had a long working relationship with him. So I mean, we're just really finding or looking at ways on how do we make life, the, the education of our students more real life and applicable to the, the skills and, and, and you know dispositions and attributes that they're gonna need so that they can be successful when they leave Campbell High School so that they can have a career. We don't want them to just go find a job. We want them to have a career with a livable wage so that they can be happy with what they're doing. You know, part of some of what you were just describing made me remember that at one point I was the chairman of Junior Achievement for the state of Hawaii. And we were given a presentation from Junior Achievement in San Diego. And they actually have, you're familiar with the food court. Mm -hmm. They actually had a small, um, downtown business location set up like a food court, but it would be all these different businesses wow. that would be set up that the students would actually go in and work in those little businesses and the other students in the, the, the school would come in and kind of wander around and, and for an hour or so a day, either before class or after class, this would be open to the student body and they would be selling apparel, they'd be selling school supplies, they'd be selling maybe coffee or whatever, and they would be running their own little shops in this area, uh, and it was all sponsored by uh, Junior Achievement. Neat, neat little concept and, and really made it seem very lifelike. Oh yeah, that, that's what actually what we would like to actually set up at Campbell High School, so if there's any business partners out there that want to come and set <laughs> something up in Campbell, hey, if there's a will, there's a way. We, we want to bring things in, we want you know, real life learning, we want kids to, to see what, you know, what it's going to be like and, and you know, really be successful. And talking about junior achievement, we, after I talked with you before, we contacted them, that they're going to come in, we're, we're going to get all students taking financial literacy, we want our economics kid you know, their students taking economics. We want wh whatever they have a program for, we want to also intertwine that with what we're doing because you can never get enough of anything. And as long as, you know, kids, they need to learn banking. They need to learn how to write a check. You know, we, we had a, a meeting at our school this last Thursday and one of the students said, you know, I'm not really sure I know how to write a check. I've always just used my bank card, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I don't really balance it. So I, how do we look at things to, to make things better? And we, we just want to find ways. We want to best prepare our students so when they leave and when they go and apply for a job or they do something, you can say, oh, that kid must be from Campbell. Well, and that's a great brand recognition that you want to have. And it makes them a lot more valuable. Yeah. yeah, because if they can come in to a work environment with already some basic skills, particularly the soft interpersonal ones, and if they can come in and they're ready to go to work, that's going to put them head and shoulders above a lot of other people. Yeah, and and that's really our, you know our big focus is we we want every kid to be every kid to be career ready, but we want them to also be college capable. Mm. You know, so if if a kid, a lot of our students, they'll tell us, you know, Mister, I don't, I'm not sure I can go to college because I don't want to be a financial burden mm. to my family but I think I might have to work. Well, in, in talking to a lot of the business partners we've been associating with, it's like, Shane, let, let them come do an internship with me. If they have the skills, I'll hire them. I'll send them, I'll pay for their college. And now they can go, they can work, they're getting school, but when they graduate, they're not graduating with a degree they don't need, and they're not gonna be you know, 50 to $100,000 in debt. But if they can have those skills and we can go get them and they can excel in that internship, they're gonna be well off. Our students that already can go take you know, our dual credit classes at school where you, we've seen the story about the girl at Waipahu that graduated with an yeah, associate's yeah. before she got a, a college Very or a high school graduation. Mm -hmm. that, that's the goal for every high school. How do you set students up like that? And, and those students that can fly, let them fly. Those that you have to work with a little bit more, it frees up that time so you can work with them. But yeah. And you've got the facilities out there to do that. You've got the uh, the, the the Leeward colleges out there, right? There's a four-year uh, college. Yeah, we're developing a great a great working relationship with UH West Oahu. We've talked with UH Manoa, although it's a little ways away. Uh, Leeward Community College, Windward Community College. Everybody is very receptible to to getting on board and doing what's best for kids. And our our goal, and you know, even like with the DOE now, with like the the Connect to Careers the new superintendent and our CAS, they're all looking at ways. How, how do we best maximize potential of student learning with businesses, 
post-secondary and high school. And it's just, it's a matter of, like we talked earlier, if you can get the right people at the table and get people talking, the state of Hawaii could do great things. Because the, the three entities right there is going to be a lifelong dream because you go to high school, you go to college, or you go work the rest of your life. So those three right there are going to be gratefully impactful for what, what that student success is going to be. So it's putting everybody at the table, make some great decision, partnering up, and how do we do what's best for kids that's going to be best for the rest of the people on the island? Well, it's going to benefit the kids. It's going to benefit Hawaii. It's a win-win for everybody. Um, now, we've got a few minutes left, and I did want to you know, just ask you to briefly explain to us uh, what the process is. Okay, they come in at ninth grade, they get an orientation, and in 10th grade, they learn about the different academies, and then 11th and 12th grade, they kind of focus on what they've chosen. Now, that was my executive summary. Can you flesh that out a little bit? Yeah, so the, the way we structure it at Campbell High School is the, the transition from eighth grade to ninth grade sometimes can be very difficult for kids in transitioning, especially coming to Campbell where, you know, our ninth graders are now coming into a structure that's, you know, 3,200 students. So it's, it's, it's intimidating. It, it's very yeah. intimidating. So we have uh, an uh, academy which is called our Freshman Success Academy. It, it's run by, by three great principals now, and they oversee that transition, and it's also that career exploration, you know, um, give them a taste and a feel of many of the different academies and varieties of what we're going to offer, but it focuses them on just coming up, make that transition, ease into high school, and, and start thinking about what is it that you want to do the rest of your life. And then after the ninth grade, in the grades 10 through 12, they focus more specific on the academy of what they feel their career is that they want to be the rest of their life. And mm -hmm. at Campbell, mm -hmm. it, it, our academies may change because we're going to be focused on what is the student interest. So in ninth grade, they'll take an interest inventory and it'll talk about the type of careers that they, that they feel most interested in and what does a kid want to do. So we may change, wow. but it's also based on what the needs of the state are because our focus is we want to try and keep kids in Hawaii. So in 10 through 12, they would pick one of those academies. But after the 10th grade year, we allow a student, you know, if he just made, well, I made a choice, but I don't really like that now, but I hear the great things they're doing in this academy or these guys are going to do this. We allow that student to, to make that jump and, and pick a different academy because the overall goal of the academy program is to get them, you know, the information and the, the soft skills and prepare them for the career they want to go into. But they can still graduate on the normal timeline. Yes, e everything they still meet. And actually with, with the bail schedule uh, at Campbell, they can have most of their credits by the time they finish their 11th grade year. And then our senior year, we want our kids getting out and getting into internships. So I've been going out and meeting with a lot of businesses that are willing to take, you know, students from Campbell High School to go out and do interns. So they can go see the real life applicability of wow. the job they're going to choose. Wow. And, and the businesses on Hawaii have been great. You know, I've probably talked to two or three hundred businesses and not one of them have said no we don't want to help Campbell High School. What, what kind of businesses are you looking for? Real quickly, because we're about ready to wrap up, but, but you need businesses to come in and offer internship type programs, or, or what, what are your needs? Yes, we're, we're looking for anything. So I mean, as far as businesses, if they're willing to look at like job shadowing, you know, students to come in and see what careers are like, mm -hmm. internships are great. We, we want to get our seniors that have the, the credits for graduation already, we'd like to place them, and if businesses like them, we want them to, you know, if it's possible, we want them to hire them. Mm -hmm. and, but and how do they sign up? And we're running out of time, and I want to get this out there. So, so how do they sign up? So businesses, they, they could go to CampbellHigh.org. CampbellHigh.org, that's we, your website. Yeah, CampbellHigh.org. And, and it basically, if you scroll down on it a little bit, it, has, it shows all the academies, and the, the academy messages, the mission, the vision, all the contact information. Or just call Campbell High School and ask for Shane Greenland, and, and I'll put you where you need to go. We'll come meet with you. We'll talk about what we can do, but we want businesses involved with Campbell. We, we want to make things great. Well, we'll have to have you come back on the show again, and we'll, we'll, we'll put that request out there again and make sure everybody gets it. And, uh, you know, having a, an engagement is going to be an exciting thing to watch. So looking forward to hearing back on that. Well, sounds great. We'd love it. Uh, thank you, Shane. This is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30, uh, and we talk about uh, interesting opportunities in Hawaii to help people and individuals and businesses be successful. So have a great week. We'll see you next week. Aloha.